Hey everybody, this is Jamie, and what I'm going to do in this tutorial is show you how to make some, I guess I would say semi-intelligent enemies chase your player in an RPG style game. So what I have here is a RPG style top-down, really just background, this is just a big background image, and then I have a blue square for the player and two red squares for the enemy. And let me just show you what I'm going to show you how to create in this tutorial. So I'm going to preview this. And now those red enemies, they start to move. They're set up to chase the player. So they're going to chase me wherever I go to on screen. You can see they're changing their direction as I move. Now the cool thing is, is they're going to move around obstacles to get to the player in a semi-intelligent way. It's not really pathfinding. There's no real detailed AI here. But through setting up some attributes and special collision type effects in Game Salad, you can see these enemies are able to find their way around and through obstacles and appear to be somewhat intelligent as they chase me around. They'll move through these bushes if I move up here, they'll turn around and, and try to find the quickest path to me and move around through them as needed. And then back if I go, I'm going to cheat and go across this pond. I can, but they can't right now. And they'll work their way around the edge eventually to get to me. And same thing with this tree and bushes up here. If I move here, they'll chase me over this way. They'll seem to notice that the stuff is there. They move around. I'm going to circle around them so they come back at me. And you can see they adjust their position and move around the obstacles to get to me. So this is what I'm going to show you how to set up in this tutorial today. I'm going to start from an empty file. So let me switch my window to the empty file. And all I have here right now, the enemies aren't chasing me. I can just move the player and nothing else is set up. So we're basically going to start from scratch here. So in the player, let me show you the player first. There's just some movement controls and it's just keyboard controls for up, down, right, and left. Nothing fancy there. But what I want to do first is I need to make a couple attributes. And these attributes are going to keep track of the player's X and Y location. So I'm going to make them real. I'm going to call the first one player X. I'm going to do a second one and call it player Y. And then in the player actor, I want to constrain the X and Y position to those attributes. So I'm just going to create a group to put those in. Call it my location. I'm going to take a constrain attribute. I'm going to constrain the game player X to the self position X of the player. I want to do the same for the player's Y position. So game player Y constrain to player position Y. So now what this is going to do is it's always going to make these two game level attributes, player X and player Y, equal to the player's current position X and Y. What I'm going to do with those is in the enemies, is I'm going to have the enemy follow the player to that location. And I'm going to do that with, and this is critical for this type of movement and control that you use an accelerate toward behavior for that. So I'm going to accelerate toward the player's X position and the player's Y position. And now this value here is how fast you're going to want your enemies to accelerate. I'm going to make these fairly slow just so we can see 
kind of the thought process as they move around the screen. In an actual game, you may want to make them faster. You would probably have some enemies that move fast and some enemies that move slow. But I'm going to set this to 50 for the purpose of this tutorial. Now, again, another critical thing you need to do just for this type of RPG movement is in this motion of the enemies, you want to set their maximum speed to whatever your acceleration is. So since I'm making the acceleration of this enemy 50, I'm going to set the max speed to 50 and make sure that apply max speed is checked. Because what that's going to do is it's going to immediately start moving the enemies towards the player at their maximum speed, which is 50. It's never going to allow them to increase past 50 because you have their max speed set to 50 and max speed turned on. So right now when I start playing this, those enemies start to accelerate right towards me and follow me around the screen wherever I go. And they never move past their maximum speed of 50. Now let's play with this a little just so you understand exactly what's going on there. If I made this acceleration 10, they're going to start moving very slowly until they reach their max speed of 50 and then they won't go beyond that. So you could change your acceleration to a lower number but you see how they kind of slosh around before they decide to chase me. They kind of end up going all over the map. That's why I like to keep the acceleration matching the max speed because then they don't kind of float around and act like they don't know what they're doing when they want to change direction. They change direction immediately as fast as they possibly can and follow you when those two numbers match. And they just seem a little more intelligent that way. Now another thing, if I didn't apply this max speed, I'm going to turn that off temporarily and you'll see that they eventually start moving super fast. So fast that they fly around the screen. And I have wrap X and Y turned on here. So they're flying all over the place. So you can see that totally whacks out the whole idea and basically breaks it and stops it from working. So you want to make sure and turn on apply max speed for sure. So once again, you can see now it's back to normal as I move past them. They chase me and seem to make up their mind quickly that I've passed them by and change their direction accordingly. Now there's no collision set up here so we can all run across this stuff. So that's the next thing we're going to do is make some intelligent collisions so they seem to know where obstacles are on the map. So let's go back to the stage. And I'm going to add our first obstacle. Let's add a bush. I'm just going to drag a bush in here. Right now it's nothing but scenery. So let's do some setup on the bush. What I'm going to do here is first I'm going to make its physics zeroed out. I don't want the player or the enemies bouncing off the bush. So I'm going to set the density, friction, and bounciness all to zero. I'm going to, well, I'll fix its rotation, but I'm going to make it not movable so it doesn't really matter. Now, what does matter is the collision shape. You absolutely need to make the collision shape a circle for this to work correctly. So I'm going to make that a circle. And then another thing, this is already, the bush is kind of a circle already. It's a little bit squashed or whatever, but because it's already a circle, I'm going to use that to our advantage and under the graphics settings, horizontal and vertical wrap, I'm going to make those fixed. And I'll show you what that means in case you don't know. So with that being fixed, 
When I go back to the stage, in fact, let me delete this in case it didn't update right. Now that that's fixed, when I put this on the stage and increase the size of the actor itself, you'll see the graphic within the actor is not scaling. And that's what fixed means. I could scale this actor itself, large or small, and the graphic within it stays at a consistent size. So in this case, I'm going to use that to our advantage because what Game Salad does for its collision boxes, you either have a circle or a rectangle. And if it's a rectangle, it exactly matches this rectangle of whatever the actor is. Here it would be a rectangle. Here it would be square, pretty close to square anyway. But when it's a circle like we've set up, it will make the smallest circle possible within this shape. So for example, if I did this, there'd be a little circle here in the middle. That is the collision shape. And if I make it a square, and I'm going to make it a perfect square, because that's what I want for this tutorial. So I'm going to make it 66 pixel perfect square. Now, when I highlight this, there is going to be an imaginary circle larger than this bush within this actor shape. It will go the bottom, top, left, and right edges of the circle will touch the edges of this actor box. So it's going to give a little extra wide space around the bush and that's what makes the enemies seem like they realize the bush is there and they pass around it at a certain distance. That distance is going to be dictated by the size of this actor because it's got a, a circle space over top of the bush, if you can imagine that. So let me finish setting up this bush and you'll see exactly what I mean. I'm going to set up a tag, a collision tag, and I'm going to call it obstacles. For now I'm going to drag the bush in there because that's the only one we're setting up. And go back to the enemies. I'm going to add a collide in those. I'm going to tell it to collide with actor with tag obstacles. Now there's just one bush set up, but let's make sure it's working right. As these enemies approach the bush, I'm going to kind of hide behind it so we can see what happens. Oh, I got to turn fixed rotation on on the enemies. So let's do that on the enemy. I forgot to turn on fixed rotation. And while I'm here, the enemy's collision shape should also be a circle. So let's try that again. You know what? I noticed there was bounciness on here. I don't want that either because I don't want my enemies bouncing off the obstacles. There we go. So that's all fixed up. Now let's see what happens. Should look a little bit better this time without them flying around and bouncing and rotating. Now it acts like it sees the bush, walks around it, and chases me. So let's make sure I'm going to get over here again. They seem to see the bush, work around the outside, and chase me around it. So now it seems like they know that obstacle is there, and they're finding the quickest path to get to me. Now what would happen if I wanted a bigger path around that bush? All I have to do is increase the size of this actor because the collision shape of a circle will now go to the far edges of the actor, not to the graphic within it. So they'll seem to take a wider path around the bush this time. Here they come. Now they are taking a wider path, definitely. 
And of course, you could make it so they go right up against the bush if you wanted to. I find it works better and looks more convincing when things take a little bit wider path because that's just when you see something you tend to walk around it not walk right up to it bump into it and then walk around the edge so obviously it's up to you when you're making the game but I prefer to have a little wider path around things so I'm gonna put that back I'm gonna give it a little bit of a wider path and then I'm gonna make a couple copies of this like I had in the demo tutorial and then you can see that they'll just go ahead and find their way through the bushes as needed. Gonna work around it, chase me down. I'll come through the bushes and you can see they reverse their path and chase me around. But they're definitely acting like they know the bushes are there. So it's kind of some faked AI. Now the reason this works is with the enemies having a collision shape of a circle and then the obstacles having a collision shape of a circle as well. Those circles move around each other's edges. If everything had a square or a rectangle collision shape, they could get hung up on the edges and stop and things wouldn't seem to work as well as they do with the circle collision shape. So you definitely want to use circle collision shapes with this. Now, of course, everything has its limitations. Is it possible to set up a level where one of these enemies is going to get stuck and not be able to chase the player at a certain point? Yeah, of course it is. Everything has limitations. So it's possible to make a hole where one of these actors might get stuck and just totally lose any semblance of intelligence it might have. There we go. You know, it's it could theoretically walk around the outside of these bushes here, but it doesn't know that. So knowing that that's a limitation, you just have to work within it. Of course, when I come around the other side, it frees itself and comes after me. But like anything, there's limitations to this. So when you know that limitation, you can work within it. Now, if you did want a bunch of bushes put together like this, and you were worried somebody was going to get stuck, what you can do is make a separate actor entirely. I'm just going to call it obstacle. And what I'm going to do with this actor is I'm going to make it invisible. I'm going to set its alpha to zero in the physics settings. I'm going to zero this stuff out. I'm going to fix its rotation, make it not movable. And then I'm going to give it a circular collision shape as well. Before this obstacle will work, I need to add it to the obstacles collision tag. So I'm just going to drag it in there. What I can do with this actor is I can just use it basically as a block to kind of make this whole group of bushes an obstacle as a unit. So if I put this collision shape there, now watch what happens. Those enemies would treat those bushes as more of a unit instead of three individual bushes. And then they'll find a way around the unit because they're using that large collision shape as the collider instead of the individual bushes. And that also works for things that are just painted on the background level like this pond or like that building. I can go ahead and take this Put it right there, make it just a little bit bigger than the pond, like that. I could do the same thing with the building over here. I'm going to make a copy of that and drag it over. 
put it about like that. I'm sure that'll be fine. Obviously, you can fine-tune this stuff for your game as needed. Now, if I come up here to this pond, then, and hide behind its edge, those enemies are going to act like they know the pond is there. Move around its edges to chase me down. So that's really it. That's all there is to it. Now, in the demo, I had a tree in the scene. And you can do this with any graphics you want, obviously. I'm going to put a tree up here. I'll put a couple bushes by it. Let me use the bush from... Eh, now this bush will be fine. I'm going to put a bush by it. Make its collision box just a little bit bigger. Which really isn't going to be necessary in this case because what I'm going to do, you'll see... So I'm going to use this collider again. Kind of put it around the tree and the bushes. Now those will be obstacles as well. So as I move around this tree, and bushes, the enemies know they're there, and they figure out a path to chase me around it. If I move down here, of course, they're going to chase after me. They're going to realize those bushes are there, move around them. And keep after me. So that's pretty convincing and pretty decent top-down Zelda style RPG enemy chasing behaviors with a little bit of intelligence thrown in. So that's it for this tutorial. Have fun making games!